हेलो एवरीवन आई एम संदीप ग्रोवर एंड आई वेलकम्स यू ऑल ऑन माय चैनल क्रिएटिंग बायो माइंड्स विद ए न्यू वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द केमिकल नेचर ऑफ द डीएनए डीएनए व्हिच इज अ जेनेटिक मटेरियल इन मोस्ट ऑफ लिविंग ऑफ ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द जेनेटिक मटेरियल देयर आर सर्टेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नेम्स एसोसिएटेड विद द डिस्कवरी एंड रीनेमिंग about the genetic material and first name is of frederick mischer he was the first person who very first time isolated dna from the pus cells and named it nuclein nuclein are the chemical substances responsible for the inheritance of the characters it was said by oscar hartwig and later on r altman replaced nuclein as nucleic acids and later on mr konberg was responsible to synthesize dna in vitro in laboratory moving ahead of it now we are going to discuss about location of this genetic material where exactly it is located so it is located there directly into the cytoplasm in case of the prokaryotic cell and it is circular in nature there it is directly present over there in the cytoplasm as a pro hormone and plasmid and in case of the eukaryotic cell it is located in nucleus and it is in linear form it is localized there and form chromosome with the attachment of the histone proteins moving ahead of it one thing i would like to lay stress on main important thing is this this particular chemical substance dna is also found in some amount in certain organelles also like mitochondria and plastids so this is called as the extra nuclear dna or organelle dna now we are going to discuss about the chemical structure of this particular genetic material which is dna in most of living organism rna is also genetic material in case of certain viruses both dna and rna are nucleic acids and they are formed by polymerization of nucleotides what are nucleotides then first of all we are going to take nucleotides into the account and later we are going to discuss about the structure of the various components associated with this genetic material so nucleotides are formed of nucleosides and phosphate phosphate is this is called as the biological phosphate group you can see this is the phosph phosphate present over here and these are the hydroxyl groups attached on different regions along with this oxygen so this is the biological phosphate group which is associated with the nucleoside to form nucleotides and these nucleosides are formed of nitrogenous bases nitrogenous bases and a sugar pentose sugar chemical formula is c5h10o5 nitrogenous bases are of two different types and these are in the form of purines and pyrimidines purines are nine member double ring
एंड आर हैविंग नाइट्रोजन एट फर्स्ट थर्ड सेवंथ एंड नाइन्थ पोजिशन इन प्यूरिन वी इंक्लूड एडनिन एंड गुवानीन पैरामिडीन आर सिंगल रिंग सिक्स मेंबर एंड दे आर हैविंग नाइट्रोजन एट फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड पोजिशन एंड इन पैरामिडीन्स वी इंक्लूड थाइमीन यूरेसिल and cytosine when we are talking in case of the dna so sugar which is in the form of the pentose and that sugar in case of the dna will be deoxy ribose and in case of rna sugar will be ribose so these thymine uracil cytosine adenine guanine are the nitrogenous bases and they are always written in the form of abbreviation by their initial letters in capital form like adenine will be uh, written as by a guanine by g thymine by t uracil by u and cytosine by c so here are certain structures earlier has been made by me and now we are going to discuss how by these different components nucleotides are formed because these nucleotides when are polymerized then they will form nucleic acid in the form of dna and rna so directly we are going to discuss about all those structures which are associated with the nucleotides so this is the ribose sugar a pentose sugar earlier i have been made it uh you can see this is the first carbon atom second third fourth and fifth here is the oxygen and this is the hydroxyl group and this structure is for the ribose sugar and this ribose will be there in case of rna and in dna there will be deoxy ribose sugar deoxy ribose sugar means there is a deficiency of one oxygen and that deficiency will be from the second carbon atom and there both hydrogen will remain like this and this oxygen will be removed in case of deoxyribose sugar moving ahead of it this is the structure for the phosphate earlier have been taken into the consideration by us and moving ahead of it now we are going to discuss about the various nitrogenous bases and first we are going to discuss about the purine and in purine we included about, uh, included adenine and guanine so this is the structure for the adenine you can see this is the uh nitrogen at first position then at third position then at seventh position and then at ninth position they are double ringed they are nine member and this will be the arrangement of the different components associated with the purines and especially in case of the adenine and this is the structure of the guanine here also they are nine member double ringed they are having nitrogen at first third seventh and ninth position so there are the certain differences basic differences here you can see there are the amino group over sixth position and uh, here in case of the guanine there will be the amino group at the carbon number second so when we became familiar with the structure of the adenine and guanine now have a look on these arrows also you will see there is the point of the attachment of this ribose sugar along with these nitrogenous bases these ribose sugar when this deoxy ribose sugar joined with nitrogenous bases especially in case of the purine like adenine and guanine they will join at ninth position as arrow is very clearly indicating in case of purine and in case of the pyrimidine like thymine cytosine and uracil uracil is not part uh, here in case of the dna uracil is there in case of rna uh, when it replaced thymine so you uh, you will see 
when these pyrimidine are attached with this deoxyribose sugar in case of dna they will be attached at the first position and the bond which will be formed between the nitrogenous bases and deoxyribose sugar that will be glycosidic bond and when this glycosidic bond is formed it means nucleosides are formed and when nucleosides are formed then there is the attachment of this phosphate group along with these nucleosides and when these nucleosides are attached with the phosphate then they form nucleotide so this is the phosphate group there is a bond which is called as the phosphodiester bond phosphodiester bond is formed in between nucleoside and phosphate then they form nucleotides so when you see that these glycosidic bonds and phosphodiester uh, bonds are being formed they are formed by the condensation mechanism by removal of water molecule water molecule once it removes hota hai aur condensation ke mechanism ke through glycosidic bond and phosphodiester bonds jo unki formation hoti hai so when we are now aware about ke how, how nucleotides are formed and once the nucleotides are formed then their polymerization takes place this lead to the formation of the nucleic acids and nucleic acids are in the form of the dna and rna so now we are going to discuss about the double helical structure of dna according to watson and crick a model given in 1952 we are going to discuss about this model now watson and crick said the dna molecule is double helical and this dna molecule is formed of two chains of polynucleotides polynucleotides and these chains are anti parallel like if we talk about this this is first chain this is the second chain polynucleotide chain with fifth prime third prime direction third prime and fifth prime direction means these two chains are anti parallel to each other and they are having polarity in the form of fifth prime 3 prime 3 prime 5th prime direction they said that these two polynucleotide chains are twisted around a right handed direction and form a double helical structure like this a ladder like structure you will see and we are assigning their polarity also they said the structure of the dna molecule backbone specially is formed of sugar and phosphate this is the backbone which is formed by the twisting of these two polynucleotide chain in a right handed direction this form a helical structure a ladder like structure with cross bars and their backbone is formed of the sugar and phosphate and this cylindrical space inside it is occupied by nitrogenous bases and they said this dna molecule has two grooves one is major groove other is minor groove major groove has 22 angstrom diameter and minor groove have 
ट्वेल्व एंगस्टोम डायमीटर एंड दिस एट डायमीटर ऑफ दिस डी एन ए मोलिक्यूल इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड इट इज ट्वेंटी एंगस्टोम एंड इन दी this cylindrical space where nitrogenous bases are present this their base pairing uh, their bases are attached by hydrogen bonds over there and adenine will always combine with thymine by two hydrogen bonds and guanine will combine with the cytosine by three hydrogen bonds and one more thing here it is to be noticed is that in this cylindrical space there will be one purine, purine and there will be one pyrimidine molecule because this the, uh, fixed diameter of dna molecule which is 20 angstrom is suitable to accommodate only one purine and with pyrimidine one pyrimidine no two purine and no two pyrimidine can accommodate here in this cylindrical space because it will make the structure unstable but dna structure is stable and it remains stable throughout the generation generation after generation moving ahead of it then they said that this complete term of this helix takes place in 34 angstrom and in 34 angstrom when this complete term takes place there is only 10 nitrogenous base pair there in one term and these nitrogenous base pairs are arranged in the form of a stack and they are minding a gap of 3.4 angstrom sun and crick model not only depreciate the structure of the dna molecule but also tell different people that dna exactly has ability to faithfully replicate its information and transmit all this information generation after generation different forms of the dna will also have similar kind of the property and difference will be there in only number of nitrogenous bases and direction of the helix so in case of b dna we earlier are aware about this that b dna will have 10 nitrogenous base pairs a will have 11 nitrogenous base pair c will have 9 electron uh, nitrogenous base pair and d will have only 8 nitrogenous bases and while we talk about zdna zdna will have 12 nitrogenous bases and zdna is left helical in nature and its diameter is also 34 angstrom so these are certain types of the dna and we should not also forget ke dna can be there in cytoplasm dna can be there in nucleus in case of the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell and it can be present there also in certain cell organelles like mitochondria and plastids so these are the different types of the dna which we talked about and later on we are going to discuss about the packing of dna which lead to the formation of the nucleosome and nucleosome when will lead to the formation of the chromatin fiber their condensation will takes place and then chromosomes will be formed so in next video we are going to discuss about the packing of dna